All right. All right, good morning, everybody. Good morning, God bless you all. God bless you this morning. We're thankful for another day here at uh, Spreading the Word. Uh, we are the church where everybody is somebody and Jesus Christ is Lord. We're thankful this morning that God has allowed us another Sunday to come together, to be able to hear the word of God, to be able to share the word of God. Uh, we are live on our, our digital platform of uh, Facebook this morning. And we also, uh, if you're seeing this video later on YouTube or somewhere along the line, we're thankful for you. We're thankful for you that you would uh, take the time to hear a word from the Lord. Uh, we are excited about what God is doing here at Spreading the Word and with us in our lives. Even in the midst of the times that we are living in, we are still excited because God is still God. He is the Lord of all. He is yes. the Lord of all. That's why we said that we are the church where everybody is somebody and Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ is Lord. Lord. He is not just our Savior, but He is our Lord. Yes. And when we know that He is our Lord, that means that He is in control. And since God is in control, we uh, are dealing in a time of, 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 uh, of not just trials, but also of triumphs. And the things that, and the things that when we are dealing and knowing that we are in a time of triumph, uh, it, get, it feels us and leads me into sharing our core values with you. Here at Spreading the Word Worship Center, uh, we have four core values. And I say these every time that I get a chance to stand before the people, uh, whether it's in the facility, in the building, or uh, virtually. And our four core values are wrapped around four words. And those four words are we are passionate about. And we're passionate about primarily or principally four things that spread in the word. First thing we're passionate about is purpose. We're passionate about our purpose, which is that leads us to purpose and direction. We know that we have something to do. We know we have some place to go. And we're excited about the journey. Passionate about purpose. The second thing we're passionate about is loving. We're passionate about loving because we are a loving people. We are not just so wrapped up in just loving God only that we don't love each other, that we don't love Amen. each other. So many people in life, they are loving, they, they, they're saying that they're loving God, but then they're not following 1 Corinthians 13, and they're not loving, they're not following what the Lord gave them, uh, gave us, and when he told us to love ourselves and to love the Lord, um, our, our God, with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength, but then also to love our neighbors even as we love ourselves. So we are passionate about loving. So that means we build horizontal and vertical relationships. That means that we are mastering conflict resolution. We're mastering conflict resolution. We are mastering conflict resolution. Since we're mastering conflict resolution, that means that sometimes we are in the midst of conflict. But we are the reason, the reason sometimes we're in the midst of conflict is because God has given us the ability to provide his answer yes. in the middle of conflict. Yes. So the third thing is we are passionate about giving. We're passionate about giving. So we are, we are givers. We're givers of our time. We're givers of our talent. And we're giving of, of our treasure. So it's not just about uh, sometimes you may not have a bunch of money, but you got a kind word. Yes. You got a smile. You got a nod that you can give to say, yes, I'm with you. We got, a, you know, we got something to say, I got your back. We got a prayer life that we can pray for somebody in the middle of what maybe they be going through. Yes, going through. yes. And the fourth thing is we're passionate about learning. So in passionate, being passionate about learning, it means that we are not just uh, Sunday go to meeting people. We are not just... Um, people who are excited about uh, Sunday service, but we're not excited about learning the word of God or being part or, or reading the word for ourselves or becoming more educated about different processes. Not just, you know, some people are very uh, profound in the word of God, but they don't, they don't have any practical common sense. Mm -hmm. So God called us to be passionate about learning. That means that we're passionate about discipleship. So many people, they know the word of God, but they don't know how to apply it. So they don't, they're not good at discipleship. So those are the four things we're passionate about. Again, we're passionate about purpose, loving, giving, and learning. And so I want to be able to uh, share with you all, uh, as we get ready to go into the word of God, 
you know, that, uh, you know, all of those things that we do is about, you know, saying that we're equipping men to be fishers of men, mm -hmm. saturating this world with the love of Jesus Christ, changing lives, healing relationships, and bringing glory to God. Amen. So God has given us all of those things, the, the, the motto, the purpose, the, the core values. We're doing all of those things to be able to win the loss and to be able to help our lives to be better yes. in all parts of our life. Yes. God did not call us to lose in any part of our life, yes. but he called us to win in all parts of our life. So let's get ready to go into the word of God on today. Uh, as, as we're teaching this word, I, I encourage you to um, uh, join in on the virtual part of it if you can, as much as you can. And we're gonna have we're gonna have virtual church as well as physical church together. Amen. All right. And so if you can comment, if you can like this, if you can share the video, if you can ask someone to join in with you, if you're at home with somebody, uh, let's have church together this morning. Amen. Amen. Let's have church together this morning. Yes. If you're on the phone with somebody, let's have church together this morning. Yes. Because God is a good God. Yes, he, he is. is. You know, if you're around somebody and you're wearing your mask. Okay, you can wear your mask, you can cover your mouth, that'll mean you close your mouth. That's good. All right, so we can cover our mouth so we don't spread the, you know, different germs or whatever, respiratory stuff, but without mean we close our mouth. Yeah. In the aspect of still giving God the glory yes. and giving God the praise. That's All right, so let's go into Luke chapter number five. Luke chapter number five, verses number 36 through 38. Luke chapter number five and verses 36 through 38 is where we're going to be drawing our attention to on today. Luke chapter number 5, verses 36 through 38. Luke chapter number 5, verses 36 through 38. And I'll read to, uh, to us from the following from the King James Version of the Bible. And it says, And he spake also a parable unto them, No man putting a piece of a new garment upon an old. If otherwise, then both the new maketh a rent, and the piece that was taken out of the new agreeeth not with the old. And no man putteth new wine into old bottles. Else the wine will burst the bottles and be spilled, and the bottles shall perish. But new wine must be put into new bottles, and both are preserved. I want to talk to us again for a few minutes of our time uh, on this Sunday, I want to talk to us and again, just say, I can't go back there. I can't go back there. This is what I want to share with us on today. I can't go back there. God did not, and he is calling for us to not go back to certain things in a certain kind of way. This parable that Jesus uh, gave uh, and this, I believe this is in three of the gospel uh, books uh, that this particular parable and uh, they were talking about fasting and they were talking about how, um, why is it that the believers or the, his disciples are not doing something at this particular moment. And God was trying to give, give an understanding, a clarity of thought, if you will, that there, that there would be a time, but the time isn't now. And some things that they were that they were doing at the moment was not applicable to the time that was happening in the moment. So I want to the first thing I want to encourage us all to do on today is to stay in the moment. I want us to stay in the moment. I want us to learn how to stay in the moment. Many of us really right now. We are still in a last year mindset. Mm. Many of us right now are still in a January mindset when we are almost in August now. Mm -hmm. Many of us are, pre, are, are in a pre-COVID uh, uh, way of doing mm. things when this is a, a present COVID yeah. moment Amen. that we are living in and, and praying and believing God for a post-COVID mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. But you cannot believe God for a post-COVID world and you still act in pre-COVID. Mm -hmm. You got to get yourself in the mindset of transformation so that God can do the new thing that he's trying to do in our life. So I want you to just make up in your mind, you know, as we're virtually as we're possible, and just say, I can't go back there. If you want to put it in the comments, if you want to, 
Say, I can't go back there. If you want to say amen in your house or in your shopping cart, where, where you at, or in your park, wherever you're going, in your car, I want you to just say, I can't go back there. I can't go I back there. I got to make up in my mind that I'm not going back I'm not going there. back there. Because what what what, I, what it was, if it, it, it's not just so bad, but it's just not for now. Yeah. It's not Something, you know, this is what we do in life. We are many times we are all or nothing people. And God is saying that you got to learn how to live with some things. You got to learn how to uh, incorporate some things into your life so that you can be able to get victory over some things. You got to learn how to be able to get some victory over some things, not just living in the in the uh, 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 all or nothing all the mm -hmm. time. We make things too many things nuclear in our life. We make it all or nothing. You know, I'm either your friend or I'm your enemy. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you got to learn how to build a relationship. Sometimes you got to learn how to build That's a right. friendship. Sometimes you got to learn how to build a marriage. Sometimes you got to learn how to build a church. Sometimes you got to learn how to build a business. Yes. Many people who are entrepreneurs, they say that they, God is giving them to start a business, but then they don't have any, they don't have any stick to itiveness and want to build the business. And so as soon, as soon as they get one bad review, they want to shut the thing down. Mm -hmm. As soon as many pastors who say that they're called to pastor, but then they, they have one bad week at service and they don't want to pastor no more. God is saying you got to learn how to build the things in your life. You got to learn how to build upon your life and build within your heart and build within your mind. Because when you learn how to build within the thing, then God will begin to work through the thing. Yes. And he'll begin to do a new thing in your life. So it says here, and Jesus spake in 536 through 38 of Luke, and said that he spake also a parable unto them. No man put it a piece of a new garment upon an old. If otherwise, then the both the maketh a rent. The new maketh a rent. And the piece that was taken out of the new agreeeth not with the old. Mm -hmm. And put no man new wine into old bottles. And else the new wine will burst the bottles and be spilled. And the bottles shall perish. But new wine must be put into new bottles. And our both are preserved. So here, this is what God is saying to us. We've got to start putting the right things in the right places. We've got to start positioning things in the right way. We've got to start push, uh, positioning perspectives in the right way. Because if we don't put, position our perspectives in the right way, there will not be a proper response the way that we want it to be. So you get, you got to stop putting old mindsets on and old failures in relationships into new relationships and expect them for it to change. You got to start making up in your mind that when you say that I'm going to work on tomorrow, I'm going to work at the job that I'm working at that I got paid where the eagle flew on your last Friday. You got to, you got to start acting like those values of that place instead of going and, and going to, you going to McDonald's with a Burger King mentality. You got to stop doing that. You got to stop going to McDonald's with a Burger King mentality because the way that they do it at Burger King, that's the way they do it. You may be able to have it your way at Burger King, but you ain't going to have the two, uh, two uh, sauce with the lettuce, cheese, and the pickled onions on the sesame seed bun uh, in that place. You got to start letting things be what they are in the place that you are. Mm. And when you start allowing that to happen, then God will begin to allow the new thing and the new uh, wine and the new perspective to be able to be stitched together in your life the way God would have it to be stitched together. So I'm going to give you guys a couple of quick nuggets and then I'm going to let you all uh, get to this hot summer day. All right, here. First, uh, first point that I want to give you is this. Make up your mind to embrace your new perspective. I'm going to make up my mind to embrace my new perspective. I'm going to make up my mind to embrace my new perspective. Many people are struggling with transition. Many people struggle with change. Are you struggling with change in your life? Are you a person that, and so can you admit that you struggle with change in your life? You, and so many of us are struggling 
with change. When something changes or transitions in our life, we are, are trying to, we are losing our peace, we're losing our cool, we're losing the ability to uh, succeed in the next. You got to be able to be able to succeed in multiple different facets. I just don't want to succeed in one area of my life and be sloppy and be a failure in other areas of my life. I want to succeed in all areas of my life. Somebody needs to just say it out of your mouth, need to comment or whatever, and say, I'm going to succeed in a multiple, in a multitude of areas. I'm going to succeed in a, a multitude, multitude of, areas. of areas. I'm not just going to succeed in one area and be a, a, and, and fail in another area. But I've got to be willing yes. to embrace the new perspective to what happen in the area that needs the transformation. I've got to be able to embrace the new perspective that God would have me to embrace in the area that he's calling me to embrace it in. The word of God declares to us in, in Isaiah 61 and 3. Isaiah 61 and 3. It says it like this. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To give them unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified, that he might be glorified, that they might be called. God is saying to us that when you embrace your new perspective, that is what brings the strength of the tree and the glory of the Lord. That's when good. you embrace the new perspective in your life, that will see, it don't make no sense for you to put on beauty for ashes if you ain't going to embrace being beautiful. It don't make sense mm. for you to say that I'm, I'm getting the oil of joy for my morning if I'm not going to embrace having the joy. Yes. If I'm not going to embrace having the joy, it, you have made the glorifying of God in this, in this, in this uh, sacrifice on the cross of none effect. Mm. It has made the ability for you to be able to be stable in your transformation of none effect if you want to embrace where you're going. And you want to embrace the perspective. And, and can you make up your mind to embrace the perspective of your new? Can you make up your mind to embrace that perspective? I, I'm telling you, even those leaders and pastors that may be watching me right now, I want to, I want to encourage you on today to embrace and make up in your mind to embrace the new thing that God is doing in your church. Don't look at the same stuff that has been happening since you've been back in the building. Don't look at the same things that has been going on in the, in the, since you've been uh, back uh, more physically active uh, in the church. Don't embrace that right now. Embrace the new thing yes. that God wants to do. God has given us a whole new perspective on how to do church and how to live in the kingdom and how to live amongst yes. each other yes. peaceably. And so God has given us, and so embrace the new perspective. Some of us are so fearful of what is happening that we're not faithful to the relationships mm. that we are in. Some okay. of us, again, I'll say it again. Some of us are so fearful of the things that has happened that we are not faithful to the friendships and the relationships that God has allowed us to be able to acquire. This time that we have lived in should make have made our relationships stronger. This time that we have been, been in and been uh, socially distant and isolated from one another, it should have made and it should be making our friendship stronger. Yes. It should be making our parent uh, children relationships stronger. Yes. It should be making our work relationships stronger. It should be making us stronger in the areas of our life. But many times it's not making us stronger because we are not embracing the new mm. perspective in our mind. Somebody just needs to say, I'm going to get my mind right. I'm going to get my mind right. I'm going to get my mind right. Because the word of God again says in Isaiah 61 and 3, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. So there's an appointment in your tears. There's an appointment that is coming 
in the midst of your calamity. There's an appointment that's coming in the midst of your pain. God is said, in the midst of your pain is the appointment of your transformation. Mm. In the midst of your pain is the appointment of the transformation that he has for each and every one of us. And that appointment is for us to be given unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise. Yes. You know, you yes. can't say I got the garment of praise. What you putting on the coat for if you are going to downplay your, if you're going to downplay your praise, you mm. got the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And now, so I want to help you all, and I want to encourage you on today to let you all know this. And God, he gave me these words to be able to share with you. The, the word is this, God is increasing your self-worth. God is increasing your self-worth. God is increasing your self-confidence. And God is increasing your self-esteem. God is saying that I'm looking at you in the midst of what you're dealing with. And I'm looking at it, and I've, I've seen all the tears that you have cried, even from when you were a small child. God said, I'm looking at all of those things. And now is the time that I'm going to step in to your life. You have still said, I still believe God in spite of everything that you went through as a child. I still believe God through everything that I went through in a broken marriage. I still believe God when I got fired from my job. I still believe God when I was told no to this position and that position and this position and that thing. I will still believe God when things have been happening negative in my body. I still believe God because God says that when he looked at that and he looks at that situation, that gives him a confidence in you to be able to say that to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. God said, I'm appointing unto them that mourn and wear Zion. Right in the middle of the church, y'all. Right in the middle of right in the middle of your belief system, God says, You still been serving me. Oh my God. In the middle of pain, you still been serving me. In the middle of messed up stuff, you still been preaching. You still been going week after week. You still been tired and when you've been trying to figure out how you was going to uh, uh, put two nipples to rub together. You still been uh, sowing seed. And when you still didn't know how you was going to make it one week to the next because you heard the voice of the Lord. So God says, since you heard the voice of the Lord, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Uh, to appoint, appoint unto them that are mourning in Zion. God is appointing unto you in the middle of your tears. Yes, so yes. So that's all right that you cried. You ain't even got to act like you didn't cry. You ain't got to act like it didn't bother you. Yes. You ain't got to act like it didn't hurt you. You ain't got to act like it didn't it shake you to your core. God said, yes. I saw you when it shook you to your core, mm. but you still came back to me. Yes, and said, the Lord. Lord is my shepherd. Yes. And I shall not want. You yes. still came back unto him and said, God, I thank you for this food. Yes, I'm about Lord. To yes, Lord. For the nourishment of my body. Even thank though you were only eating two pieces of bread mm. and wish and wish that you had some meat. God says you still bless your yes. food. Oh my God. You still, you still thank mm. God for having your head to be laid, even though you had a hole in your ceiling. Because you thank God that you did not yes. go outside. Yes. God said, I saw you. Thank in the you, middle Lord. Of what you was in. Yes. And in the middle of what you was in is when God began to say your appointment time. Mm. So now, but you it's as a believer time. have got to grab hold to the newness of the appointment. You, yes. as the believer, have got to grab hold to what he's doing in our life. You, as the believer, has got to grab hold to it. Somebody needs to just make up in your mind on today that you're going to grab hold to and embrace the new. Because I prophesy into your life, I speak over your life today, that God is increasing your self-worth. And yes. you're going to start saying yes. out of your mouth. You're going to start saying God is increasing my self worth. God is then increasing my self worth. Mouth, God, you are. God is increasing my self confidence. God is increasing my self confidence. Increasing my self esteem. God is increasing my self esteem. My self esteem. Yes. Then I want to say this to you all, and I'm going to move on. God is healing you yes. from your codependency. Yes. Oh my God. God is healing you. From your codependency. Yes. So that you Help us, Lord. to stop cheating yourself. Mm. God is going is healing you Thank from you, your codependency. 
so that you refuse to stop cheating yourself. Somebody need to say, I can't go back there. I can't, I can't go, go back, back there. there. Uh -uh. I can't go back to cheating Ooh, myself. I can't go back and there. Mad, I'm mad at the world because I cheated myself. Mm -hmm. I'm mad at the world because I'm cheating myself. I can't go back there. I refuse to I go back to cheating myself. I cannot go back there. I refuse to go no back Lord. to I, I refuse to not, as uh, as, as Pastor Scotty would always say to me, Apostle, I need, I want you going to be the best expression of yourself. Uh, I, you're going to be the, the best expression of yourself. God is saying to us that you are going to become the best expression of yourself. God wants us to do yes. it, but you got to have a self-confidence yes. to know that if God appointed yes, Lord. duty for my ashes, yes. if God appointed Thank you, that Lord. I would be a tree of righteousness, if God appointed that his glory will be glorified. If God appointed yes, that Lord. the blessing of the Lord is part mm. of who I am, then I have no other choice but to be what God has said for me. God has said, I have no other choice but to be yes, what God yes. has said and called me to be. Mm. God has said, Thank you, I Lord. have no other choice but to be and to be get real worthy. I said, God said, you know, I know we like to say right, that somebody man. anointed, but God said, look, I, you got to start saying, I'm real I'm oily about it now. I'm, I'm real oily. oily about it now. I'm real oily about it now because God has allowed the oil of joy to be in place of my mourning. Yes, those tears, isn't this something, the transformational process of God, mm. that he will allow tears to come down your face. Yes. And as they're coming down your face, you, those, those tears and the water ducts will turn into the oil. Mm. Isn't that amazing that Thank God will Lord. allow yes. all of the pain that you have gone through mm. to be able, and just like they said, the olive and then the press and the oil is being squeezed out of it. Yes. God is saying that he is the purity mm. of that oil. Yes. The purity of that oil. It don't give you high cholesterol. Mm. It don't clog your arteries. Yes. But God said that I allow the purity of that oil to continue to bring, bring you up into a place of new. I'm embracing yes. my new. Yes. Second thing I want to give you all is this. I'm, 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 I'm trying to hurry up here. The second thing is this. He is creating a capacity to care within you to carry the next generation. God is creating a capacity within me to carry the next generation. You got to start looking at yourself. This is what, this happens after you get self confidence. This happens after you have self esteem. After you know that if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side, mm. where would you be? As you know that God in His abundant, amazing grace yes, yes. will allow a wretch undone like yourself, mm. like myself, to be used, yes. to be able to share the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, to, uh, to be able to have God who would forgive me umpteen times, mm. and He still called um, and qualified times. me. God is saying that I am creating within you a yes. capacity to carry the next generation. Yes. God is creating within you Ooh, glory. the capacity. I need, I just need you to, I need you to speak mm -hmm. that out of your own mouth. Mm -hmm. God is creating within me. God the is creating within to, me. To be able to carry the next generation. The next mm -hmm. generation to be able to carry is, the next generation. is going to be carried yes. by me. Because mm, I'm new yes, body. Lord. Yes, because Lord. Because I'm a new person. Because I am a new. Because I have a fresh anointing. I have a fresh experience. What is it that you have been through in this past year yes. that somebody else has not been through? What has you? And what have all of us who are who are still alive and yet remain are, are going through right now in the midst of this pandemic? We are in a in a place where uh, where people have not been in. Mm -hmm. In over a hundred years. Yes. God is saying that I am creating within you a capacity to carry the next generation. That's the new bottle. God is saying mm. that I want you to look within yourself to know that you are, uh, you are, a, you have the ability to handle it. So, why, whenever, the next time you feel like you are about to lose it, I want, I, I want to speak into your hearts right now. And I want, I speak these words into your hearts right now. You're going to be able to say, I can handle this. Hmm. 
You're going to be able to, the Ooh, next time glory, you feel like you're going to melt down, God is saying that you, he, he, you're, you're stepping in up. God is saying that the next time you feel like you're melting in the sun, My God. God is blowing a cool wind yes. in the middle of your sun. Yes. How do I know that he would do this? Because they're not the Lord. As he had the children of Israel Thank walking. you, Lord. Yes. As he, as, did not the Lord, as he had the children of Israel going through that wilderness, did not the Lord have those children of Israel to have a cloud by day and a fire by, by night? night. Yes. Did not, did not God do something to help them to be able to deal with the elements of what they was in? Because they had to be able to carry that thing to the next generation. Yes. Ooh, Jesus. Did not, I, believe, I, I, I believe that when they left out of Egypt, that they carried the bones of Joseph. Right? They carried the bones of Joseph, but they, they carried them because they were as a testament of how God will allow them to be able to know that they can make it. Mm, thank you. But they were the carrier of the next generation. Mm. Joseph carried them from a pit. Ooh, Jesus. Joseph carried them from a prison, and Joseph carried them from a palace. And now, what? Now they had to be able to carry Joseph mm. from that place That's good. That's to good. the place of where his forefathers yes. were. Yes. So you got to do your job in this generation. Yes. You got to do. Your, you got to know that God is giving you the ability and the capacity that's within you to carry this assignment yes. to the next. Generation. Mm, the glory, last point is, and, I'm, I, and I promise y'all, I'm going to let y'all go. Very simply is this. The last point. Don't be so new that you disrespect the aging process. Mm, Don't be good. so new that you are disrespectful of the aging process. I will not disrespect mm, that's the aging good. process. That's good. My newness has to have and get greater value over time. Then I believe though, back in, and maybe I'm and maybe I'm dating myself and telling my age. There was a commercial I believe they used to say, "We will sell no wine before it's time." Mm -hmm. We will sell no wine. Now it didn't mean it wasn't wine. It just means that it wasn't going on the market until the proper time was occurring. That's good. God is saying that I want you to not be so new that you don't disrespect the aging process. Don't be so grand in your thinking that you want to think like this never happened before. Don't, th don't be so uh, narcissistic that you think you're the only one that's going through. Hmm. Don't be the only one that think that you have ever had to deal with what you had to deal with. God is giving you the ability to deal with it. Yes. But you got to know that I'm not going to be so new in what I'm dealing with that I'm going to disrespect the aging process. What did God do? Or what did God allow his people to do? Don't the Bible declare to us in Hebrews chapter 11? It declares to us a, 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 a whole bunch of people who went through a whole bunch of things to be able to get a result that God wanted them to get. So God is saying that he's gonna get, he wants us to get the result out of this moment yes. that we're living in. And this is way past COVID, y'all. This is way past Donald Trump, y'all. This is in the moment that we are living in for our own personal lives. God is saying that I want you to be able to grow in this moment. Somebody needs to just make a declaration out of your mouth that I'm going to grow in this moment. I'm going to grow I'm in this moment. I'm going to grow in this moment. I am growing in the moment that I'm in. I'm going to grow in this moment. Because God has told me that I will not disrespect the aging process. I will not disrespect the aging process. In other words, I ain't going to come off the shelf too quick. In other words, I'm not going to get spilled out too quick. In other words, I'm not going to be, you know how you go you're to the store and in the, in the cooler, they have things that is first, in, in, in the first part of the thing and those things generally fly off the shelf. God is saying that I want you to be able to let yourself be in the back of the shelf if you got to for a few minutes so that the process of aging can get better. So that the process of aging can get more 
and more valuable. I won't be so new that I disrespect the aging process. The word of God tells us this, y'all, in Exodus 14 and 12. In Exodus 14 and 12, it says, Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt? Saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians. For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than we should die in the wilderness. Isn't that something? They, own their, they have left. They have been under attack. They're carrying the bones of Joseph. They're under attack. But they're carrying the bones of Joseph. They're carrying a testimony. Jesus, help me today. I wish you all would get back in contact with some of these older people and stop trying to put older people on the shelf all the time. Mm -hmm. I wish you would start talking to them and get some of their testimonies and they'll tell you. Yes. That this ain't the first time that this happened. On, and this ain't the first time mm. that, this, that we've gone through Preach, this. apostle. This ain't the first time that I've had to deal with that. This ain't the first time that your family many you had to do deal with X, Y, and Z. You're not the only one that has had to deal with it. They were carrying the bones of Joseph. Isn't that something? They're carrying the bones of Joseph, but they're trying to act like Lot's wife. Hmm. Ooh, my God. Lot's wife was frozen, right? They're carrying the bones of Joseph, but trying to act, and they, but they, they, really want, they were really longing for Lot's wife. Because hmm. they were trying to go back there. They were trying to go back to a place that was unnecessary for them to mm, be. In. My God. Ooh, when, when, when something is over, it's over. It's over. When something is unnecessary, it ain't mm. necessary no more. Mm. When something is not necessary for you to have to deal with, you ain't got to deal with it no more. Yes. It don't mean you ain't got to deal with the person. It just might mean that we just got to redefine our relationship. That's Ooh, good. My God. You got to learn how to redefine the relationship with some things in your life. You got to learn how to redefine some things in your life. And then when you redefine them, then maybe, just maybe, then the relationship can get better. Then maybe, just maybe, you can have some more value in the process of the relationship. Maybe, just maybe, you can be able to say that I'm thanking God that I was not able to, that I, I did not disrespect the Asian process yes. and I allowed the thing to go through yes. so that things can happen for my better on the other side. They started crying and complaining because they saw they saw yesterday trying to come hmm. and trying to monopolize their future. Mm -hmm. I will not allow mm -hmm. yesterday to monopolize yesterday my future. Yesterday is gone. I refuse to allow yesterday to monopolize my future. He said it like they said, let us alone. It was, you know, now they weren't saying it. When that, when that plague came through, they weren't saying it when those frogs came through. They weren't saying it when Moses walked in and, and, and he threw down the, the rod and, and being able to eat up the, uh, the, the uh, uh, Pharaoh's people's you know, snake and everything. They weren't saying all that then. What are you saying? Are you only have, are, do you only have a praise on your lips when things look favorable in your life? Mm. Are you only having a praise on your lips? When things are looking favorable only in your life? Or are you, do you have a praise on your lips at all times? I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. God is saying to us, this is my bad thing. And then we're going to, I'm going to let you go for the day. Is this. Abraham went through to get to the new. Will you go through to get to your new? Ooh. Will you go through? To get to your new. Will you go through to get to your new? But you got to be willing to submit to the aging process. And when you submit to the aging process, that means that you are having the ability to go through to get to your new. Mm -hmm. The word of God declares to us in Genesis chapter 12, y'all. It says it like this. And Abram passed through the land unto the place of Shechem, unto the plain of Moriah. And the Canaanite was then in the land. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there builded an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. But now, he, the, the, place, the reason that he was able to get to that place was because when God spoke to him, and I believe in Genesis chapter 12, and, and let me get, let me, I'm going to get it right here because I don't want to miss I don't want to miss speak. Yeah, in Genesis chapter 12 and verse number 1, it says it like this. Now the Lord has said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house. I can't go back there. 
and unto a land that I will show thee. Yes. And I will make of thee a great nation. I can't go back there. I can't go back there. there. And I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. You want your name to be great, but you don't want to get up and move. You want your name to be great, but you don't want to go through nothing. You want your name to be great, but you don't want to have to overcome or have a testimony that say, I overcame some thing. Yes. Do you want your name to be great? Are you willing to overcome some thing? Thinking about uh, the late uh, Congressman John Lewis, who died last week. Very simply, that he was a young man who decided that he was going to walk and uh, walk across a bridge for voting rights for people. And he was beat, and he said he was, he was unconscious. He don't even know what happened. The next thing happened, but they still got up on Bloody Sunday and walked across that bridge because he knew he had to be able to go through something to be able to have his name to be mm. great. What are the, one of the things that happened on Friday, right before, right before the news cycle went off for the weekend, the people in a, in a, in a state, a state that he wasn't even a congressman in, decided that they was going to change the name of a school of a racist person and change the name of that school to John Lewis mm. School. What your name became even greater. God will allow your name to become great if you are willing to deal with some adversity. Even, well, I believe last year, that the man he still he had already been diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer. But still, yet and still, he came back and he walked across that same bridge to be able to say that look what I can be able to do. And look at how God would allow me, as a, oh, and I was a 23-year-old, I believe, or so, man, at the time, when I was doing this, and I was walking with other civil rights leaders. But now, I'm an old man, and I got stage four pancreatic cancer, and I don't know what my tomorrow may hold. But I'm still going to walk across this bridge, because I'm still seeing that I'm a, I have the capacity to be a carrier to the next generation. Mm. Like that is why God would Thank work. You, Jesus. Abraham had the capacity to be a carrier to the next generation. And it wasn't in his mama and his daddy's house. It was in, and so what am I saying to y'all? I'm not telling y'all to break up with your boo. I'm not telling you to leave your church. I'm not telling you to quit your job on tomorrow. But what I'm telling you to do is embrace the new thing that God is trying to do within you. Embrace the new thing yes. that God wants to do in your life. Embrace the new Bible. Embrace the new culture. Embrace the new mindset. And then do not allow yourself to disrespect your history. Yes. Because when you can do that, you'll be, you'll be a willing participant in carrying the bones of Joseph. On the other side of carrying the bones of Joseph, you will not belong for the statue of Lot's wife. Isn't God amazing how he will work in our life if we allow him to work in our life? Yes. So if you want to be able to get the blessing of Abraham and you want to be able to get the response that God gave to Abraham where he said, I'm going to give your seed this land. If you want to get that, you've got to be willing to go through what you've got to go through. Let us pray. Father, we thank you today. In the name of Jesus, for your power and your glory and your yes, might. Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you have given us a word today that yes. says we will not go back there. Yes. That we are not going to live in a fear of our yesterday. That we are saying we're not going to go back there. That we are not going to live in the pain. And we know that the pain only has produced the oil. The pain has only produced triumph. The pain has only produced an appointment that you have allowed to come our way. We stand in agreement on today. In the matchless name of Jesus, Lord, that if someone is not, have not given their life to you, that God, you, Lord, will allow them to make up in their mind and say, I'm not going back there. I'm not going back to my sin. I'm not going back to my shame. I'm not going back to my addictions. I'm not going back to the, the way things were that are not godly in my life. 
but I'm making up in my mind that I'm going to go into the new thing in my life. That I'm making up in my mind that if I'm, I've been out of fellowship with the Lord, that I'm making up in my mind that I'm going to do what God has called for me to do. Yes. And I'm going to submit my ways to the Lord. And I'm going to get back in fellowship with the Lord. Yes. All of us have sinned. That's what the word of God tells yes. us. All of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So if we confess our sins, he is just and he is able to forgive us and cleanse us, us yes. from all unrighteousness. all unrighteousness. I encourage you all today, give, give your life back to the Lord. Give your life to the Lord. Make up in your mind that you're not going to go back there in a certain way. Make up in your mind you're going to have a new perspective on your job, on your relationships, yes. on your money, on your personal relationship with the Lord. And he's going to bless you. Yeah. You ought to be encouraged today. You ought to be blessed today. If you don't have a church home and you would like to make spreading the word to be your church home, reach out to me. Send me an instant message. If you have my phone number, uh, give me a call, give me a text, and or you know, read, there's some kind of uh, communication. And I will pray with you. I will walk you through your next. And I will gladly, gladly, gladly help you to move into the next operation of your life. Because God has a, a great destiny on your life and his hand, his hand is upon your life. And we want to be part of your journey. And we want to be able to celebrate you all the way through those things. All right, guys. If you would like to give today, if you would like to give today, and uh, you can uh, you feel free to give uh, via Zelle or PayPal, stwwccchi at gmail.com. Again, that's Zelle or PayPal, stwwccchi at gmail.com. Or by Cash App, Cash App is dollar sign, all caps, S T W M. Again, that's dollar sign, all caps, S T W M. And last, if you uh, I'd like to Givelify, you have the Givelify app or Givelify.com. You can find us on Spreading the Word Worship Center, and that's in Chicago. And we'll gladly be able to uh, accept your seed. We're thankful for all of the, our friends and our partners who have uh, uh, been sowing into uh, the ministry. People that we have not even met yet. People who we have not even met. They have sowed and they've been sowing. And we're thankful for that. We're thankful for you. And we're praying, we're praying God's choices and richest blessings over your life on today and every day. We pray for you constantly. We call out your names that are that is given that's given to us via the electronic information that we're given. And so we're praying for you. We want you all to be encouraged and be strengthened in the Lord. All right guys, uh, I, I want you all to just know that God is with you. Be on the lookout for more, more pop up prayers. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel that is Bishop Jeff Holiday J E F F Holiday H O L L I D A Y Bishop Jeff Holiday. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. This teaching and all of our other Bible classes and pop up prayers are housed right there, and you can go back to them anytime and be able to be encouraged with them. We love you all. We uh, we praise God for you all, and just be on the lookout for more uh, media content that is coming your way. You all have an incredible, incredible day. And we will talk to you all the next time. Have a good day now. Bye-bye.